Hey everyone! Today we're talking about queer books that I want to read. And when I say queer, I specifically mean lesbian books. About lesbians or bisexual women. Anyway, it's women on women. So, yeah. That's what we're talking about today. Seven women on women, lady loving lady books that I want to read. Number one is Carmilla by J, by J. Sheridan Lefanu. <sighs> Just, it's the classic lesbian book. Um, so the book opens with recollections um, Laura, who's the main character, has about her experiences with a vampire, i.e. Cam Carmilla. Carmilla is the vampire. <laughs> Laura leads a life of isolation with the... The nearest village being miles away from her home. Laura feels lonely without many friends around her own age. A friend was supposed to visit, but she fell ill and died before she could. And shortly after that, they would, um, her father and her witness a carriage accident, and an injured young woman and her mother emerge. The mother's journey is urgent, and she needs to continue without her daughter, even without her daughter. And Laura's father agrees to keep the girl in his care until she returns. Laura and Carmilla become close, but there are things about Carmilla that troubles Laura. Carmilla sometimes makes romantic advances towards Laura. <gasps> Shock! <gasps> it's the OG lesbian story, guys. Just saying. Classic literature. Lesbians. Greatest thing ever. It influenced a web series with the same name, but the show takes place in the modern age on a college campus, and it can be found on YouTube, which means you can watch Carmilla for free. It also has a movie that's based on the TV show, but but that is not for free, so... Yeah. But other than that, great show. Three seasons. On to the next one. The next one is The Price of Salt by Patricia Highsmith. The Price of Salt is the story of Therese Bellevue, maybe, um, a stage designer trapped in a department store day job whose final salvation arrives one day in the form of Carol Eyre, an alluring suburban housewife in the throes of a divorce. They fall in love and set out across the United States, pursued by a private investigator who eventually blackmails Carol into a choice between her daughter and her lover. This, I hear, is a very great book. Um, it's, um, there's a movie, um, a movie adaptation of this book and it is called Carol and it stars Rooney Mara as Therese and Kate Blanchett as Carol and I hear it's fantastic but I want to read the book before I watch the movie and that's how things go <laughs> the next one is Disobedience by Naomi Alderman the story begins with the death of an Orthodox Jewish community's esteemed rabbi, which sets in motion plans for a memorial service and a search for a replacement. The rabbi's nephew and likely successor, David, calls his cousin Ronit in New York to tell her that her father has died. Ronit, who left the community long ago to build a life for herself as a career woman, returns home, and when she hears the news, when she hears the news, she returns home, and her reappearance exposes tears in the fabric of the community. She sees an old flame named SD, a woman, because she's gay, and so is SD. <laughs> There's also a movie by the same title. Um, it's the 
it's a book to movie adaptation of the same title um and it stars Rachel Weisz and Rachel McAdams I hear it's really good and I can't wait to read the book and then watch the movie also the movie is on um the price of salt movie is on netflix and this movie disobedience is on amazon i think The next is I Can't Think Straight by Shamim Sarif. Tala, a London-based Palestinian, is preparing for her elaborate Middle Eastern wedding when she meets Layla, a young British Indian woman who is dating her best friend. Spirited Christian Tala and shy Muslim Layla could not be more different from each other, but the attraction is immediate and goes deeper than friendship. As Tala's wedding day approaches, simmering tensions come to a boiling point and the pressure mounts for Tala to be true to herself. Um, this, there is a book to movie adaptation of this um, by the same name and I hear it's amazing. Um, and I can't wait to um, watch it, well read it and then watch it. Um, and I like that both of these women in this story are um, not white because in a lot of queer books, the characters, in, in movies too, the characters are white and it's not that, it's not often that you see diversity in queer movies and queer uh, stories. So it's really cool to see that both um, women are, um, one is South Asian and one is Middle Eastern, and I love that. Okay, on to the next one. The next one is called Under the Udala Trees by Chanello Akparanta. Ajoma comes of age as her nation does. Born before independence, she is 11 when civil war breaks out in the young Republic of Nigeria. Sent away to safety, she meets another displaced child, and they, star-crossed, fall in love. They're from different ethnic communities. They're also both girls, and when their love is discovered, Ijoma learns that she will have to hide this part of herself, but there's cost to living inside of a lie. Like I said before, I love it when there are non-white queer characters in books. Um, I also, I have a book called Americana, which also um, deals with Nigerian characters. I think they're Nigerian. They deal with African characters, and I think that it's important to read books outside of your frame of reference about communities that you may not be a part of or maybe not have as much access to knowing about and um and i like that uh this book is about not only queer women but also about african women and it's about african women dealing with being displaced and, and civil war and things like that and i like um I like that a lot, the idea of that. And I can't wait to read Under the Yudala Trees. Um, I bet it is a fantastic read. The next is A Thin Bright Line by Lucy J. Bledsoe. At the height of the Cold War, Lucy Bell Bledsoe is offered a job seemingly too good to pass up. However, there are risks. Her scientific knowledge and editorial skills are unparalleled, but her personal life may not withstand government scrutiny. Leaving behind the wreckage of a relationship, Lucy Bell finds solace in working for the visionary scientist who is extracting the first ever polar ice cores. The lucidity of the ice is calming and beautiful, but the joyful pangs of new love clash with the impossible compromises of queer life. If exposed, she could lose everything she holds dear. This book is, I think, a memoir based on the author's um, grandmother, I think. Um, 
and I just, I just think this is, even if it is not accurate to this woman's life, I think that the, the plot is very interesting. Like, I like historical queers. Is that obvious? I like historical queers. I like queer, the showing of queer people in certain times in history, especially when you wouldn't consider that them to be part of that history, even though obviously they did exist, it's just that nobody talked about it, and I like seeing that part of it um, in history. So, A Thin Bright Line by J uh, Lucy Jane Bledsoe. Bledsoe. I can't wait to read it. I'm super excited. Okay, and our last book on this list is Bend by Nancy J. Heaton. Lorraine Tyler is the only queer person in Bend, Minnesota. Or at least that's what it feels like when the local church preaches so sternly about homosexuality. Which is why she's fighting so hard to win the McGerber Scholarship. Her ticket out of Bend. Bend. Even though her biggest competition is her twin sister, Becky. And even though she's got no real hope, not with the scholarship's morality clause, and that one time she kissed the preacher's daughter, everything changes when a new girl comes to town. Charity is mysterious, passionate, and to Lorraine's delighted surprise, queer too. Now, Lorraine may have a chance at freedom and real love, but then Becky disappears, and Lorraine uncovers an old, painful secret that could tear the family apart. And they need to learn more... They need each other more than ever now. And it's and somehow it's Lorraine, the sinner, the black sheep, who holds the power to bring them together. But only if she can only if she herself can learn to bend. Small towns and queers. No good track record there. Um so that was the seven lesbian books that I want to read. So yeah, thanks for watching.